You know, I sit here, Mr. Secretary, and um, one of the things that always has bothered me, and is bothering me about this hearing, is it seems that we have a tendency to, uh, I want to say sugarcoat, but it's clearly there's something going wrong down at the border, a lot. My Republican friends have said that we just declared and said that this was an emergency. I've been begging for a hearing before I became chairman. Begging. And the thing that I think bothers me the most is that when I see the pictures and I hear the testimony, and by the way, I'm going down there myself, and I'd love for you to accompany me because I want us to see the same things. I can tell you that I'm at a point where I begin to wonder whether there is an empathy deficit, an empathy deficit. So Mr. Secretary, I was disappointed when you decided last year to ignore the request for documents that I made with Representative Meadows. It's a bipartisan request. and you refuse to produce a single document about these kids, which is why we had to issue subpoenas. How much money are we spending? How much money are we spending of the American people's dollars, their hard-earned tax dollars? How much are we spending? On, on which issue? Come on, on all of them. Just give me a ballpark figure. I'll uh, take it. Department of Homeland Security is a, a $60 billion entity with fees. Uh, but, CBP is about $15 billion. Yeah, that's a lot of money. In April of this year, you gave an interview with Lester Holt in, at NBC. You claimed that the children you separated were, and I quote, always intended to be reunited. You also said this, and I quote, really? It was done very effectively. Border Patrol agents kept very careful records between the relationships between parents and children. And those connections were made very expeditiously by Health and Human Services working with the Department of Homeland Security, end of quote. Given everything that has come out, and everything that we now know, do you still stand by that statement today? Is it your testimony today that you reunited these children very effectively and expeditiously? So, Mr. Chairman, in, in that interview and, and in response to a number of questions and hearings on the same topic, what I've talked about then as CBP Commissioner is our Border Patrol agents capturing the relationships between adults and children at the border in our system. I've also acknowledged the limitations that the systems maintained by different immigration agencies have not historically interfaced with one another in a way that's easy to track those files. That's something we're going to improve under the funding we got in the supplemental. We're creating a unified immigration portal. Uh, that said, I think the response to the Miss L Court order and how fast the majority of children were reunified spoke to good captures of data and a tremendous effort by HHS and ICE to find the child and the parent and bring them back together. I do think that's in the record of the court uh, filings with the Miss L Court in the, in the weeks after that ruling. Well, that's interesting that you raise that, the Miss L case, because the judge in that case said your agency did a better job of tracking immigrants' personal property than their children. So you could find their keys, but you could not find their children. Come on now. I'm referencing the result. Yeah, well, we're talking about the same case. You quoted from it, and I did. Sure. I'm talking about the results of the Yeah, I'm talking about human beings. I'm not talking about people that come from, as the president said, SH holes. These are human beings. Human beings just trying to live a better life. And so the problem with your claim is that 
it, con it is contradicted by the facts. We now have documents and they show this not to be true. And I don't say that lightly. Your claim is also refuted by not one, but two independent inspectors general. For example, on September 27, 2018, DHX Inspector General issued a scathing report that this, and I quote, DHS was not fully prepared to implement the administration's zero tolerance policy or to deal with some of the after effects. DHS also struggled to identify, track, and reunify families separated under zero tolerance due to limitations with its information technology systems, including a lack of integration systems be between si systems, end of quote. The IG also found that the Trump administration's public claim that you had a, quote, central database, and listen to this, Mr. Secretary, the IG said it was blatantly false. The IG also found that, quote, there's no evidence that such a data database even exists, end of quote. Mr. Meadows, to his credit, has often said, and we all have said, we want transparency. And can you understand when we hear that kind of information, listening to the IG who was independent, see what, and listen to our colleagues who have, have been there right on the ground, and then we hear that there, you're talking about a database and there is no database, that seems to go in the opposite direction of transparency, and therefore, when we hear about stories coming out from you and your agency that everything is pretty good and you're doing a great job. I guess you, you feel like you're doing a great job, right? Is that what you're saying? We're doing our level best in a very What does that mean? What does that mean when a child is sitting in their own feces, can't take a shower? Come on, man. What's that about? None of us would have our children in that position. They are human beings. And I'm trying to figure out, and, and, and I get tired of folks saying, oh, oh, they just beating up on the Border Patrol. Oh, they just beating up on Homeland Security. Now, what I'm saying is I want to concentrate on these children. And I want to make sure that they are okay. I will say it, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It's not the deed that you do to a child, it's the memory. It's the memory. And so, in, and, and, I, and I told the head of Border Patrol the other day, I said, I wanna know what's happening in the meantime. We are the United States of America. We are the greatest country in the world. We are the ones that can, can go anywhere in the world and save people, make sure that they have diapers, Make sure that they have toothbrushes. Make sure that they're not laying around defecating in some silver paper. Come on, we're better than that. And I don't want us to lose sight of that. When we are dancing with the angels, these children will be dealing with the issues that have been presented to them. How do you say to a two-year-old? your mother, we can't find your mother, but we can find her keys. Oh, we'll find her keys. We got your, got your mama's keys. And so, I just think we can do better. And we can go on and on and on. But I'm hoping that we will see some immediate improvements. This ain't beating up me, I just want, I, I, I just want to see an improvement. And I want to see it, and I, I want to see where we go with this policy. Finally, let me ask you this, Mr. Secretary. And that wasn't the only thing in the report. The Inspector General at HHS issued its own report in January 2019. That report found that the Trump administration, and I quote, faced significant challenges in identifying separated children, including the lack of an existing 
integrated data system to, ta to, to track separated families across HHS and DHS, and the complexity of determining which children should be considered separated. The IG also criticized your agency, the report found, and I quote, DHS provided ORR with limited information about the reasons for these separations, which may impede ORR's ability to determine, to determine appropriate placements. As a result, the IG found that the separated children, and I quote, were still being identified more than five months after the original court order to do so. Both these IG reports were issued before you made your statements in April. So Mr. Secretary, have you read those reports? Yes, I have. And then how in the world can you sit here today under oath and defend your statement that you kept very careful records, that you worked with HHS very effectively and efficiently, and that you reunited children expeditiously? Respectfully. By, by the way, very expeditiously, you said. Go ahead. Re respectfully, I actually highlighted that issue before you asked the question, but, and I've testified on it before. We did have a lack of integrated databases for the immigration agencies between CBP, ICE, Health and Human Services. That is correct. What, I, what I've testified before and what I stated a few moments ago was that the CBP data was carefully captured. It was not available in an integrated fashion from an IT perspective, but when you put all that information together with what HHS and ICE had, exactly. they were able to work within weeks to unify the vast majority of those adults and children. And at this time, through that process, every single child has an identified parent and has gone through that process with the court and with the ACLU plaintiff's attorneys. Secondly, I would welcome the opportunity to travel with you to the border and to see our men and women and how hard they are working to care for children. Border Patrol agents holding children that were not their own, brought across by smugglers, putting formula and baby bottles together. There, there's no one defecating in a Mylar blanket. We are taking care of these children thanks to the resources we finally have. They're moving very quickly through our facilities to Health and Human Services to a better situation. And I'd be happy to show you that at the border, Mr. Chairman. I'm looking forward to traveling with we will try to make those arrangements as soon as possible.